Okay, in the last lectures, uh, we have discussed about various uh, analog integrated circuits. There are some integrated circuits which consist of uh, both analog circuits as well as digital circuits. They are called as mixed signal circuits. So, so the examples of the mixed uh, signal circuits are analog to digital and digital to analog converters. Together, they are called as data converters. They are basically analog to digital converter and digital to analog converter. So, before going to discuss the various uh, A to D and D to A converters, I will first discuss the need of this A to D and D to A converters. If you see the most of the real world signals, they are analog in nature. current, voltage, temperature, pressure, even if we take the audio signal, that is the output of the microphone, video signal, that is the output of uh, the camera. So, all these signals are uh, analog in nature. and we can process these signals in the analog domain. Processing in the sense, we can amplify, we can filter, we can transmit. So, we have discussed about the various analog amplifiers, analog filters etcetera. Then what is the need of converting the analog signal into digital signal? There are several advantages of the digital signal processing over the analog signal processing. ASP is analog signal processing, DSP is digital signal processing. One is digital signal processors are less sensitive to component tolerances. So, analog signal processing you can uh, implement uh, by using resistors, capacitors, operational amplifier, transistors, etcetera. If you take the resistor, we have seen that the resistor value say 10 K will be given some 1 percent tolerance, means this value can vary from 10 kilo ohm to plus or minus 1 percent of the 10 kilo ohm. This type of tolerances are not present in the DSP systems. The basic building blocks of the DSP system are basically adder, multiplier and then delay element. These are the three basic building blocks of DSP processor. So, they do not uh, have any such analog components because of that this will not have any changes in the component values with the temperature and uh, the other effects. Okay. And the second advantage is DSPs are more uh, immune to noise. So, 
So in digital signal processing, we are going to send ones and zeros. This is one zero one so on. If we transmit this signal in the channel, if we get some any disturbance, so at the receiver, you may receive this signal as something like this. Still, you can recover the original data bits as one zero one etc. Whereas in analog signal processing, if you transmit a signal like this using the transmitting antenna, if you receive a signal which is corrupted with the noise, something like this, this becomes very difficult to uh, reconstruct the original signal from this signal. Yeah. So in that way, we can call this uh, DSP systems are more immune to noise. And DSPs can be a low cost. Digital signal processing are low cost because of the advancements in the very log integration. In very log integration, so billions of the transistors are fabricated on the a single silicon chip because of that low cost and more reliability. and more flexible in the sense if we want to change the design we can simply change the program which will be used to implement the DSP algorithms whereas in analog signal processing you have to pick up the old components and you have to insert the new components. So there are plenty of applications of the digital signal processing because of that most of the signal processing will be done in the digital domain. So in order to process the signal in digital domain, but the original real world signals are in analog in nature. So we need to convert the analog digital and digital to analog converter. If we take the block diagram of this digital signal processor, So there is a plant here, I want to control the plant I will take these various parameters of this plant such as temperature pressure by using transducer or can also call it a sensor. So transducer or sensor is a device which converts the non-electrical quantity into electrical quantity. Here we are applying non-electrical quantity. Such as temperature, pressure, etc. Then at the output of the transducer, you will get a proportional electrical quantity. And the electrical signal that is available at the output of the transducer is very weak of the order of millivolts or microvolts. So you have to first amplify the signal. Then you have to limit the bandwidth of the signal using anti-aliasing filter. This will limit the bandwidth of signal. For example, if I take the audio signal, the audio range is 20 to 20 kilohertz. So we are going to band limit the signal to maximum of 20 kilohertz. So all the frequencies beyond this 20 kilohertz will be eliminated. Then you have to sample and hold. So the signal here will be unlock in nature. You have to sample according to the sampling theorem and then you have to hold the value till the next sample is taken. Then you have to apply to the A to D converter. 
then you will get a digital signal here. This will be processed by a digital signal processor. After processing again this will give the digital signal, this will be converted back to analog signal using D to A converter. The output of the D to A converter will be a staircase type of the waveform. So, this will have quantization errors. To avoid these quantization errors, we will use a smoothing filter. Then the processed analog signal will be given to the plant. This is the overall block diagram of digital signal processing. We are taking the analog signals or the non electrical signals, we are converting first into analog signals, then we are going to sample and quantize and then convert into digital signal. We will process the signals in the digital domain, again we will convert back into analog and the processed signal will be used to control the plant. Here, how to perform this? A to D conversion, how to exactly convert this analog to digital signal conversion. For example, if this is the analog signal, if the maximum frequency is say FM hedge, then first you have to sample according to the Nyquist theorem, which states that if you sample the signals at a sampling rate which is greater than twice the maximum frequency. So, the samples will completely describe the signal, the samples will describe the signal behavior and we can reconstruct the original signal from the samples taken at a rate of f s. Suppose, if I take the first sample here second sample here, this distance is f s, another, another f s we will take the next sample like that for every f s we are going to take the samples. This f s should be at least twice the maximum frequency component. This is what is called the sampling. Even if you take the samples without this intermediate portions, this will completely describe the signal according to the Nyquist theorem. Now, what we will do is, we will uh, quantize the signal in the sense, we will have some finite quantization levels. This is a quantization level, 0 level, 1 level. 2 level, 3 level, 4, 5, 6, 7, say. Then the first sample is near to this quantization level 3. So, what is the binary equivalent of 3? 0, 1, 1. So, in order to send this sample, we will send 0 1 1 and this sample is near to this fifth sample. So, this is fifth level. So, this sample will be transmitted by using 101. 101 is the binary equivalent of decimal 5. If this sample is above the center of this uh, two consecutive levels, we will take the upper level. If it is below, we will take the lower one. If it is exactly at the center, we can take any of these levels, but in that case the quantization error will be maximum. Now, this is near to 7, so this will send as 111. This is also near to 7, we will send as 111. This is near to 6, 110. This is exactly on 4, so 100. Like that, 
we are going to uh, convert this analog signal into digital signal. So, in the conversion of the analog to digital signal, first you have to sample and then we will hold this value until the next uh, sample is taken. You can see that this is the first sample you have taken, we will hold this until the next sample is taken. And then we will hold this until the next sample is taken. We will hold this until the next sample is taken. This is the output of sample hold circuit. This is the output of sample hold circuit. We will sample and then hold during this hold time we will convert this unlock value into digital this unlock value of say 3 into digital 0 1 1. So, the minimum amount of this uh, hold time should be equal to the conversion time of A to D converter the time taken to convert the digital signal is say T seconds then we have to hold for T seconds. So, see how we can convert the analog into digital signal. Now, the important blocks of uh, this analog to digital converter are D to A and A to D converters. So, we will discuss the circuitry of A to D and D to A converters. First, I will consider D to A converter. There are basically three types of the D to A converters. One is called weighted resistor, another is R to R ladder, and another is inverted R to R ladder. Before going to discuss this uh, D to A converters, first I will take the general theory of D to A converter. This is a D to A converter. This will have some reference voltage V R. And then you have to take the output here and this is the output current. So, the output of D to A converter is current, we have to connect to the voltage to uh, current to voltage converter to convert into voltage. This will get voltage by converting this current into voltage and of course, this current will be given to I to V converter to get the corresponding voltage. The input will be digital. say n bit digital to unlock converter d1 d2 so on up to dn d1 will take as msb most significant bit dn will take as least significant bit then the expression for this output voltage will be in the form of some k time constant vfs is full scale voltage into d1 times 2 to the power of minus 1 plus d2 times 2 to the power of minus 2 plus 1 up to dn times 2 to the power of minus n. So, normally the k value will be taken as 1. So, if you take say a 3 bit d to a converter and if you take k is equal to 1. So, V naught will be V f s times d 1 2 to the power of minus 1 plus d 2 2 to the power of minus 2 plus d 3 2 to the power of minus 3. If digital input is d 1 d 2 d 3 is equal to say 0 0 1 this is least significant bit, this is most significant bit. Then what will be the output voltage? 
v f is d 1 is 0, d 2 is 0, only d 3 is equal to 1. So, 0 into 2 to the power of minus 1 plus 0 into 2 to the power of minus 2 plus 1 into 2 to the power of minus 3, this is equal to v f s by 8. If I take v f s as 8 volts, the full scale voltage implies v naught is equal to 1 volt. So, the decimal equivalent of 0, 0, 1, if you take the binary, what is the decimal value? 1 in the decimal. If I take say 1, 1, 1 as d 1, d 2, d 3, what is the decimal equivalent? Is 7. How to convert the binary into a decimal? So, this 1, you have to multiply with the weight, 2 bits are left, 2 square plus second one into to the power of 1, third one into to the power of 0, this is equal to 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. So, we can easily see that from this expression, if VFS is equal to 8 volts, then output will be 7 volts, correspond to 0, 0, 1, we are getting 1 volt. If D1, D2, D3 is equal to one 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 and VFS is equal to eight volts. VFS we are fixing at eight volts. Then what will be this one? V naught is equal to eight into one into two to the power of minus one plus one into two to the power of minus two plus one into two to the power of minus three. This is equal to eight into one by two plus one by four plus one by eight. Eight is the LCM. 8, 8 get cancelled, numerator will get 4 plus 2 plus 1 which is equal to 7 volts. So, here if I take VFS as 8 volts for this 3 bit D to A converter, if you form the table digital input analog output. d1, d2, d3. For 0, 0, 0 will get 0 volts only because yeah, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. So, 0 into EFS is 0. For 0, 0, 1 as you have seen here, this is 1 volt. 0, 1, 0 you can easily see in a similar manner 2 volts. 0, 1, 1 you will get 3 volts. So, on up to 1, 1, 1 you will get 7 volts. And see how we can convert this digital to analog. Okay. So, whatever the decimal equivalent of this digital will be the output of D to A converter. Now, how to implement this D to A converter? If I consider the first uh, type of D to A converter weighted resistor, as the name implies, we are going to use the resistors which are powers of 2, which I mean. Uh, Weights are powers of 2. There will be a switch which can be either connected to ground or it can be connected to minus VR reference voltage. The weight of this resistor is 2 to the power of 1 into R. This will be connected to the voltage, current voltage converter. With say feedback resistance RF, this is the analog output voltage. See if this current is I naught, here no current flows. If I assume that the up amp is ideal, the entire I naught will flow here. Let us call this current as I1. This is
d1 bit msb then we will connect here another such type of this switch this is grounded this is connected to minus vr this is d2 and this will be 2 square r we have 2 cube r this is ground this is connected to minus vr this is t3 and so on for n bit d2 a converter the last one is 2 to the power of n into r this will be d nth bit lsb this is grounded this will be connected to vr line. let us call this current as i2 this current as i3 this current as i n now we can derive the expression for the output of this d to a converter which is analog signal the input is here these are the digital input this is the digital input so at this node if I consider the currents uh, leaving or this is I1 and this is I2 this is I3 so only current that is entering is I0 the remaining all currents I1, I2, I3 so on up to IN are leaving so I0 is equal to I1 plus I2 plus so on up to IN what is I1 this is at ground potential because of the virtual ground this is also a zero potential this is the direction of the current so this volt is minus this voltage which is equal to minus vr divided by 2 raised to the power of 1 r is i1 this is nothing but 0 minus of minus vr divided by 2 raised to the power of 1 into r this is equal to simply vr by 2r similarly i2 will be vr by 4r i3 will be vr by 8r so on up to i n will be v r by 2 raised to the power of n r therefore what is i naught sum of this so v r by r if we take as common here this uh, switch we are going to use is called single pole double through switch spdp single pole double through so if the bit is 1 it is connected to minus vr if di in general i varies from 1 to n is 1 at logic 1 switch connects to minus vr if bit is 0 it will be connected to ground So we can call this one as D1 if switch is 1 then only this will connect to minus VR. So to get this minus VR correspond to the I1, I1 value is VR by 2R, V by 2R we have taken outside. So this is D1 by 2 plus D2 by 4 plus D3 by 8 plus 1 up to dn by 2 raised to the power of n so this is same as the expression that i have given i naught is equal to vr by r d1 2 raised to the power of minus 1 d2 2 raised to the power of minus 2 d3 2 raised to the power of minus 3 so on up to dn 2 raised to the power of minus n
see the current expression. So, what about the output voltage? We can see that here this voltage is 0. So, V naught minus 0 because the direction is here. So, V naught minus 0 divided by Rf is I naught or V naught is equal to V naught minus 0 this is 0 divided by Rf is equal to I naught implies V naught is equal to I naught into Rf. So, here if I want V naught I have to multiply with Rf. V R into R F by R D 1 to raise to the power of minus 1 plus D 2 to raise to the power of minus 2 D 3 to raise to the power of minus 3 plus 1 up to D n to raise to the power of minus n. If I choose R F is equal to R implies K is equal to 1 and V R is equal to V F S then this expression is exactly same as the general expression that I have given. K is equal to 1 Vfs, the remaining terms are same. Then V naught you will get as Vfs into D1 2 raise to the power of minus 1 plus D2 2 raise to the power of minus 2 plus D3 2 raise to the power of minus 3 so on up to Dn 2 raise to the power of minus n. This is the expression for the output of D to A converter. The inputs are the digital bits D1 to Dn. And as you have already seen here, if it is 3 bit, this is the expression. So, corresponding to 0, 0, 0 will get 0, 0, 0, 1 will get 1. The same table is valid here also. So, if I take this input versus output it is 0 0 0 voltage is 0 correspond to 0 0 1 if I take 3 bit V naught is equal to Vfs into D1 to raise to the power of minus 1 D2 to raise to the power of minus 2 D3 to raise to the power of minus 3 if D1, D2, D3 is 0, 0, 0 implies output V0 is equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, 0, 1, you can see that this is V0 is equal to Vfs by 8. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 is this is by 4, Vfs by 4. So, like that. So, this will hold up to this one. Here, this will becomes at 0, 0, 001 Vfs by 8. And this will hold until the next value. This will hold until the next value. Like that, this will continue up to 111. One, one. This is 0, 1, 0. This is 0, 1, 1. This is 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 1. 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1. This voltage level, sir. This is Vfs by 4. Where 0, 1, 1. This will be Vfs into 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8, 3 by 8 Vfs. Like that for the last one, 7 by 8 Vfs. If Vfs is 8, correspond to 0, 0, this will be 1 volt, this will be 2 volts 8 by 4 2 and uh, 3 by 8 into 8 this is 3 volts so one of this will becomes 7 volts you can convert the digital into analog. So, this is the first type of D2A converter where you can implement this using weighted resistors, but uh, there are several drawbacks of this weighted resistor D2A converter one is we require the 
long range of the resistors. The lower value is 2 raised to the power of 1 into R. If it is the lowest resistor, highest resistor will be having value of 2 raised to the power of n into R. If n is equal to 8, so if lower resistor is 2R, highest resistor is 2 raised to the power of 8, means highest resistor will be 128 times that of lowest resistor. If it is 12 bit DAC, highest resistor will be 2048 times this is 128 is 2 raised to the power of 7 that is n is equal to 8 2 raised to the power of n minus 1 for 12 bit this is 2 raised to the power of 12 minus 1 this is 2 raised to the power of 11 this is 2048 this is wide range so normally we will take the lowest resistor at least 2.5 kilo ohms because this is going to load otherwise the operational amplifier the input impedance becomes less thereby it causes the loading effect so normally we have to take at least 2.5 kilo ohms to avoid loading effect If I take the lowest resistance as, uh, lowest resistance as 2.5 kilo ohms for 12 bit DAC, the highest resistance will be 248 into 2.5 kilo ohms. This comes to around 5.12 mega ohms. This is a large resistor. It becomes difficult to fabricate in the IC form. This is the one of the drawback. Another is the accuracy depends upon the uh, accuracy of the resistors. As I have told, uh, the resistor values uh, varies with the uh, various parameters such as temperature and all. If resistance value varies, then the accuracy will be affected. So, because of this region, uh, will uh, this weighted resistor D to A converter is not uh, popular. To avoid this drawback, so we will uh, consider the another type of a D to a converter such as R to R related type D to a converter that we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you. Mm -hmm.